don't give me that look, okay? I, I know it's been a long time coming. I know it's been a long time since you've seen me, but I'm here now. And if you're... If you were upset that I didn't come sooner, it doesn't make much sense for you to be upset that I finally did. It's not like there was an expiration date on the invitation, at least not in any literal sense, so... <laughs> surprise! Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Let's start simple. I did not know that she was your ex-roommate, I did not know that she was tall, and I still have questions as to whether or not cats can talk. Um, I think that might have been a puppetry mistake. I think it might have been an engineering inconsistency. You may have just been playing a prank on me. There are a lot of possibilities here. And I really don't have time to run through all of them. I do have a plane to catch later on, but uh, not in the way that you think. <sighs> I think I probably uh, I think I probably need to slow down a little bit, but I don't have I don't have time uh, as previously and in fact very recently established. So why? Don't you tell me, <laughs> okay, never mind, I'll keep going then. I know, just incidentally for what it's worth, I know I've got things to answer for, okay? You're not supposed to do what I did, you're not supposed to brace yourself against a pineapple-flavored sponge tracing along the side of a sidewalk with the side of the slapping fries. Oh, they got big hands and they just come at you. It's a surprise every time. It's one out of every 16 boxes, so chances are you go down to get fries, you're going to be fine. Once in a while, they pop out, go, <laughs> and just run rampant all over your face. And I can't be expected to predict this sort of a thing. There's no consistency anymore. People tell you they're going to do something, right? They tell you like, oh, I'll come by real soon. And then they be a jackass like me and it takes uh what are we looking at here six years if i'm yeah six years wow long time no see how have you been i need to tell you about the face ham so i cooked a dinner one time for me and my third wife and a, a, a lot's happened like i get it okay but a, a lot's happened and i made a dinner and uh, through the ham just straight into a Dutch oven, uh, slurs it around with my spatula, with our spatula, and then the charring began, and I started thinking real hard about lemonade, and about who saw the potential for that to be a thing. Because if you just squirt lemon liquid in your mouth, this is gross and bad, and who was it? Who was like, I bet there's stuff we can add here that'll make it real tasty and the little children are gonna love it and they're gonna entrepreneur themselves a shack on the side of the freeway, growing a handful of mint every five minutes and seconds and muddle it with the lemon juice and the sugar and tell the passing motorists to honk if they love reindeer and they never honk honk because the grown-ups in this world are oh no you can't get me with your sasquatch fables of generosity and cranston cranston isn't a real name it isn't a real person if you tell me there's a cranston i know you're one of the liars and while this train of thought was running through my mind the ham the ham, its its charring had gone in a strange direction. It was now face-like in its charredness. I started talking to it, and it didn't talk back. And I know that's realistically the outcome that should come out when you're talking a ham face. But somehow it broke me. I was sure that this was my miracle, that the voice of the Dalai Lama was going to issue forth from this chunk of pig flesh and be like, hey, butt munch, get it together, and then I would finally be a real boy. But it turns out that didn't happen, and after my third attempt at getting through to this silent ham, this turgid slime ball of a pain sapling planted in a garden, a grove, and a frangeline clomp, developing, training for the evergreen antelope Olympics, it's the wrong flavor coming at you out of that bubblegum. Oh no! Oh, sticky, 
savory bubblegum, shrimp scampi bubblegum. Doubts. I I've moved past them. Because the one time that I didn't have doubts, I should have. And every other time, I was the jackass. Every other time, I was the cabbage-renting sales clerk with a scam up his sleeve. Every single word I ever said, I was lying to you. I was trying to trick you into giving me mayonnaise. I forgot which aisle had the mayonnaise, and the only reason I proposed to you was so that I could get my hands on yours. Dry sandwiches drove me to extremes, Helen. But, but, <laughs> but I'm here now. We're past that. I'm past that. How have you been, Helen? <laughs> okay, no, it's it's still my turn to talk, isn't it? I, sh I should tell you about the trip to Italy. So, we were gonna go to Milan, but then I realized that Milan's a little bit fancy for my taste. Maybe try out Naples. Yeah, 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 said my second wife, Frangeline. Frangeline said, yeah, 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 let's do Naples. So we went down there and we were standing by the train station, wondering how to tell which ones were the taxis and which were just passing birds, because both of us were in kind of a bad place that year. Uh, when all of a sudden a gentleman walks up to us and says, scoozy, scoozy, uh, have you seen my Jeffrey? And I'm like, what is, is this your pet? He says, yes. What else could I have meant? I'm like, I don't know, boyfriend? Maybe your butler has escaped? There were a few different possibilities. Don't you talk to me like I'm the one with no imagination. I'll tell you all about Slamblemb. And he says, Slamblemb? And I'm like, there's no M in it. You're doing it wrong. I said, Sam Clive. He says, that's a strange accent you have, sir. And I go, yeah, I'm not from around here. I'm from the land of the stripey clams. They come out of the ocean. Already like that, you don't even have to paint them. But there's little numbers on there in case you want to. And it's proof. That there's a childlike joy flowing through the bloodstream of the universe. You think those are galaxies and Milky Ways? No, it's space blood. It's space blood, and I haven't seen your Jeffrey. He says, well, you're gonna help me look. Slaps a leash around my neck. Now I'm a bloodhound pawing across the concrete of Naples. I don't even know where Frangeline's gone off to. Maybe she just got in a cab... We did meet back up two days later after I had found Jeffrey. Jeffrey was a seagull. The seagull told me that I would one day receive a special package in the mail from a person who claimed to be my aunt but was actually my cousin because deception is a commonality among me and my bloodline. No, not the space one. That's from a different rant I went on. <sighs> Every time you protect something, you are destroying something else. And I don't think that ever really sunk in for either one of us, but we worked hard to make sure that our marriage, our union, our pickle farm of a front porch Saturday with the jazzy ukulele solo crooning out across the open fields Drifting out of a bar stool with a gum-flavored laser beam. No shrimp scampi involved this time, though. And we didn't know what we were doing to the world around us and moreover to each other. I probably should have led with this, Helen, but I'm th so sorry for just everything. And I don't know if it makes sense for you to be sorry, too. But on the off chance that you are, feel free to bring it up at any goddamn point. Because otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and tell you all about my mistakes. Now, I do kind of get the feeling you're having a good time hearing me out here. 
I'm not sure how I feel about that feeling. All I know is that the West is a cold and rainy orchard where people are trying to be worms and lichen and slurpy bug-faced clam demons chewing their way through the skin on the outside and slurping out the juice. But no. No, 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 no. Farmers coming over. Scissors made just the right size to pluck my brain out and spit it down into the dirt where it can gradually be composted by other lichen like me into more of the soil that will grow more of the fruit for wilier lichen and possibly a couple human beings down the line, but they don't get most of the fruit. We get most of the fruit. And by we, I mean our kind because I'm clearly not in on it. It's we, non-inclusive, I've just invented a grammar, I am grammar, hear me conjugate. And keep your eyes on Jupiter, Helen. Sailing through an orbit preordained by a physics we had no say in. Just saying I'd have done different things with the aerodynamics. But like, crane your neck? So very sideways. So topsy that even the turv folk... In southern Turkey, it would look at you and say, Cool it, sister! This is excessive. <sighs> so anyway, I've, I've got that plane that I was talking about. Got my gloves on. I've got my stance enabling cleat heels. I'm, I'm taller now. Uh, both organically, inorganically, and pre-affluentially. Re revisionarist claiming with support of the height, the boost. I got new shoes. I, I'm a little bit offended you didn't notice. Goodbye.